I'm uh, Yves, I'm the founder of Skyhero. So Skyhero is a company based in Belgium that provides a robotic suite to a assaulter team to prevent them, to put them in danger when they have to enter a danger zone. We learned from the field that actually uh, an assaulter team, they're going to deploy technical means depending on the situation and not always the same uh, technical means. Meaning that if you have to deploy a UAV, it means that you need to act fast and you have to cover multiple floors. But it's noisy. Okay. So sometimes they prefer deploying a robot, which is more silent, easier to use, has longer duration. So we try to deliver them with a global system. So pole cam, robots and UAVs. So I'm going to explain you shortly and briefly how this works. So actually you have one backpack that has all the equipments embedded. One central control unit. Okay. And as you can see, multiple vectors that you can deploy. UAVs, UGVs. Okay, so I'm going to place the battery inside the UAV. Okay, inside the first one. Here we go. I'm going to turn my hand controller on. I'm going to take a second UAV. I'm going to take another battery. So the system relies on no network. So I don't need any Wi-Fi, no cell phone, no GPS. I need nothing. So the, the system sustains its own and will create like a closed loop communication system between the hand control and the device. Okay? I have multiple buttons here on the side. Those buttons are meant to take control of one of another de device that I have been deployed. First connection between the devices takes up to 10 seconds because we use a fully encrypted messages and we create a session key so that the people cannot spoof our system. So record and repeat the messages later on. So the session that I'm creating now is unique. So now I have the three devices connected to my hand unit and I can switch from one to the other. So now I can control my robot. So the robot will be controlled by myself. So it can flip upside down. It has two camera. So you don't care about the orientation. So if I should flip him, he will just keep on going forward, backward, left, right. Okay. So the camera will switch fully automatically. Okay. So I am controlling the first UAV. I can bring that UAV anywhere. Ask him the UAV for waiting. Okay. For hover. So like I said, he doesn't need any GPS. He will use the computer vision to understand his environment and hold his position without any GPS needed. He's still streaming audio and video, okay? So any individual in the team can keep on watching uh, the, the, the video feed created by this one or by this one, and they can switch fully independently from one to the other. So I can switch from one device to the other absolutely infinitely. So let me land it. So while I'm controlling the first one, anybody in the team can keep on watching the second or the third one or whatever. Uh, I will show you also the payload capability of the system because it's not just UAVs and UGVs, but you can also attach a payload to them. On the robot and on the UAV, you have an attachment system. So you can connect. I'm going to just place this so I don't need any tool. I'm just going to place it, press it on. OK, now it's connected to the system. So the flight algorithm would be completely adapted to the new uh, center of gravity. But also the hand controller will give me now new capabilities to control this new payload attached. So this one is a very strong stroboscope creating 6,300 lumens. Or oh, we have been delivering the system for three years now to yeah, more than 1,000 units around the world. So we cover. 25 countries in Europe, SWAT units from the police and from the armies, and we cover most of the three letters agencies in the, in the USA. So yeah, we have a very wide numbers of uh, end users today. the managing director of Servicopter, 100% owned subsidiary of Airbus Defense and Space. Of this new unmanned system is Kappa-X, and it's a new concept of a light tactical system in the range above 25 kilograms of, of max takeoff weight. The aim is to address the, the new requirements of the forces being terrestrial, special forces, naval forces, aerial forces, to be able to answer to a wide panel of missions. We have imagined this concept of system to be really modular. Modular in terms of configuration. As you can see, it's not symmetric because on one side you have the possibility to have it with a vital capacity to be deployed in some uh, confined environment really quickly with short wings to, to have a high speed configuration to be able to go on target quite quickly. Or 
you have other options with the same system to be in, in a classic horizontal uh, takeoff or landing position with a, a longer wing to have more range, more endurance and to have different kind of missions. You can also combine, if you want, the VTOL capacity with the long wing. If you, so you, you add some, uh, some weight. So in this case, you have maybe to reduce a little bit your payload capacity, but it remains a modular solution. Modular in terms of configuration, as I just told you, but also in terms of payload capacity. So here we have a payload bay that you can see uh, under the system, under the UAV. And you can choose if you want to uh, take with you one, two, maybe three different payloads, uh, a radar, an EOS, a cargo, a ROEM, any kind of system to enable you to perform your mission. The payload capacity would be at least 10 kilograms. So in the heaviest configuration with the VTOL capacity, etc., you can take at least 10 kilograms up to 100 kilometers range and for an endurance of at least 10 hours, around 10,000 feet, and a cruising speed of 18 knots, around 18 knots. It's unique of its modularity, first, easy to deploy. Uh, they have an extremely reduced logistical footprint. We have a human-machine interface that is well known by our operators already today, and we will benefit from this new system, from this experience also and already on our products today, but it's still the aim for the future ones, to be certified to have a, in terms of airworthiness, to have a product that will fly, stay in the air and be recovered by the forces and not crash anywhere and be really industrialized. Nextair Robotics is a subsidiary of Nextair Groups. Uh, it's fully dedicated to development of new robots uh, dedicated to defense and uh, security applications. The Ultra is the one uh, you may see here. So this is a robot, so medium size, uh, so one ton, a little bit less than one ton. So equipped with uh, four uh, with electrical motors uh, and so dedicated to different missions. In fact, so whatever the robot is, so in Nextair we consider that uh, the robot is made of mobility, smart functions, so autonomous capabilities and the mission part. So this one, the platform is an electrical one and so with different sensors, so I will tell you more about it. And then the, the, the robot you may see here is equipped with a combat system. We combine at the moment so bigger robots and small ones, for example, to make reconnaissance of a building. Big robots will be able to move long distance, and in fact, will be able to carry the small robots. And so when you come close to the building, so the robot will deliver the the big one will deliver the small ones, uh, which will enter the building and to make some reconnaissance. So the Nerva LG is a highly modular robot, so in terms of mobility, so you are right. Uh, so one robot can be equipped with strikes, another one can be equipped with uh, wheels. Uh, and uh, the modularity is also uh, available for the mission parts. Uh, and so, of course, uh, all the robots are equipped with cameras for reconnaissance. So this is the basic capability of the robot. Uh, but the Nerva can be equipped with different sensors. So here in Sofens, uh, because the scenario we have to play is some uh, CBRN uh, reconnaissance or radiological reconnaissance. Uh, this is the reason why uh, one robot is equipped with radio sensor, radiological sensors, uh, and mapping system. So the robot will enter the building uh, and so make a map of the building and detect uh, and lo localize uh, radiological threats. Uh, the other robot, so in this scenario, so is used to protect the building. So the other robot will uh, stay outside the building with a thermal camera to detect any threat. So these are two examples of this modularity. With the same robot, in fact, we can address here two different missions. We have to reduce uh, the human workload. So Definitely, so all the soldiers, all military uh, guys, so ask uh, for robots, of course, uh, but they don't want, uh, in fact, to operate the robot of the time uh, because they want to focus on their core mission, their core operation. So this is the reason why we increase um, the level of autonomy of this machine. So the big one here, so is dedicated to dismounted combat. So it means the, the speed is roughly 15 kilometers an hour. So with autonomous capabilities, so follow me, the follow me capability is one uh, of them. Uh, 
So it means that you, the, the operator, when you come close to a building or when you come to the field, the operator don't have to, doesn't have to operate the robot all the time. So it can push a button and then the robot will automatically follow people. So this is one example. Then, of course, we can use GPS uh, uh, so that the robot can follow waypoints. Most of the time we try not to use GPS because we know this is uh, very easy to jump. Uh, and so we use other way, in fact, to develop autonomous capabilities. Uh, the idea is uh, to implement these capabilities, these autonomous capabilities, uh, but with only by relying on local perception, onboard perception, such as camera or lidar like this. Uh, but uh, we don't want to use this GPS or initial sensors all the time. We delivered quite a lot, so roughly 1,000 of NERVA, so all over the world, uh, uh, with different configurations, so for different missions, so mainly to defense uh, applications, security, ev even rescue teams, in fact. Uh. Yet. and we are based near Bordeaux and our job is to make artificial intelligence but artificial intelligence with voice. You can control any machines, any robots, any drones, any vehicles by your voice. You just have to talk and you can control the machine. Look. Okay doggy, can you go to the right and go to the left and trot? No say hi. I can give several orders to the machines and it will execute immediately in real time. It's totally homemade, uh, it's patented. Okay, I want you to stop right now and come back. Sorry, I must control the dog in the same time. Okay, maybe you can do a backflip. Okay, stop again and uh, make your own business. We, we have made the whole part of software, okay? We, do, we don't make the robotic part or the, the aircraft or the manufacturer part. We only develop the software. It's a uh, voice AI. So you can control any machine, drone, robot or vehicle just by using your voice. Today we work with Dassault Aviation on the aircraft. Uh, we are working on a ground vehicle uh, for the battlefields in cars. With the uh, Ronald Group we have made many prototypes and for collaborative robots, and robots, of course, but we have other new markets we are opening right now in 3D printing, augmented reality, control and command like C2 or C4 ISR and in the supply chain. And in the coming months and in the coming years, we will integrate all our algorithm inside microchips. It was a few years ago, we have won the man machine teaming. It was a French national call organized by Dassault Aviation to look and find a new generation of supplier for the, for the aircraft industry to build the next future fighter aircraft. We provide artificial intelligence and voice assistance to the pilot inside the cockpit. Thank you.